Hey everybody, on today's episode, we're gonna be discussing yet again one new brand new loan program that's gonna help buyers secure a much lower interest rate in today's high interest rate environment without any money out of their pockets. Now, if you've never watched this show before and don't know what a 2-1 buy-down program is, I highly recommend you go back to one of my latest episodes where I discuss it in a lot more detail because today's episode is going to be building on top of that. So if you don't know what a 2-1 buy-down program is and you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to check out the video right up here. I linked it above. If you're not watching this on YouTube, just go back a few episodes and you can search for the one that's titled the most popular loan product on the market right now. And that's gonna give you everything you need to know about 2-1 loan buy-down programs, as well as some examples so you can get better understanding of when it's used. Now on today's episode, I'm gonna be talking to Dennis from eMortgage Capital, and we're gonna be going over a brand new way and a brand new type of 2-1 loan buy-down program that's going to, again, help buyers secure a much lower interest rate without any money out of your pocket. And we're gonna go over some examples of exactly how this works so you can better determine if this type of loan product would be a good fit for you. So let's go ahead and get into it. Hey everybody, I wanna go ahead and welcome Dennis from eMortgage Capital today. Dennis, thank you for joining us on the show. Thank, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Appreciate so, it. Uh, we do, I'm talking to a lot of lenders lately, and I wanted to bring you on specifically because we just had a conversation, what was it, yesterday or the day before? Um, and uh, there's a new product out there that you are offering that I think might be helpful for a lot of buyers right now. So we've we've talked about 2-1 buy-downs on the show before and kind of a little bit about what that is. But one of the biggest disadvantages of these 2-1 buy-downs is that the seller always had to pay the cost of these buy-downs. So um, your program that you were telling me about is now allowing lenders to cover some of these costs. So I just wanted to kind of go over uh, what that exactly is, how this kind of works, and just give us some more information about it so buyers can understand that there are programs out there where if the seller decides I'm not paying for anything, you have to buy the house that it is, or maybe you'll pay for a little bit of the buy down, but not everything. Mm -hmm. There's still options out there for them to be able to use this product to get into the house. So can you kind of give us an overview of what the 2-1 buy down program is a little bit, but more in lines of how exactly lenders are going to be able to use this credit to be able to help buyers out? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so just like you're saying earlier, it was mainly seller concession we couldn't use to, to do these buy downs. And uh, now they actually updated, most lenders updated and, and allowing us to use this, uh, a uh, lender credit also. And we can actually use uh, a realtor credit as well. Okay. So, or, or any interested, you know, third party in, in the transaction. So we could use not only seller concession, right? So, because that. Gotcha. We, so does that we include like a, gift funds and stuff for like so if, if someone's parents wanted to contribute a little bit of money to help them buy down the right? Is that something that's doable as well? I mean, that would go more towards, uh, I would just do, use that as a normal gift in that case. Okay. Uh, but but uh, it, 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 yeah, mainly lenders and, and, and realtors that can help out. Okay. Uh, on, cer on certain purchases that we see now, like we we don't get a full seller concession maybe we you know let's say we we need fourteen thousand in seller concession to do a buy down mm -hmm. maybe they can only get that you know okay. maybe the seller say no so that's when it's good then to use uh the rest for example from the lender or from you know from the realtor you know whatever whatever we can do to make the deal happen you know okay um, so can we kind of go over some of the scenarios so people can actually see what their monthly mortgage payment would look like? So obviously, um, with the lender paying for some of this, I am assuming there's going to be some costs involved, whether it's a higher percentage rate or there's a bit more fees involved to be able to do this. So can you kind of give us an example of, let's say, um, maybe the lender has to pay five grand towards or something like that, five grand towards this buy down program. Mm -hmm. What does that do to the overall mortgage payment every month to be able to get this done versus the seller having coming in with everything? Yeah, so we could definitely look at that. So let me pull up, should we use a $800,000 purchase, for example, then mm -hmm. uh, with a 20% down? If we wanted to use then two one buy down uh, with lender paid, <laughs> So this on 648 loan amount, a 2-1 buy down, meaning that first year is 2% lower than what we lock in. Let's say we locked in today. So 
let's say the rate is six and a half right now. First year they're gonna the buyers are gonna have a four and a half percent rate. Second year they're gonna have a five and a half percent rate. Then third year they're going into the six and a half percent that we locked in. Most likely we uh, you know we've refinanced them by then. Yeah. Most likely, right? If, if uh, I, I think the rates are gonna come down, um, you know, before that happens. So yeah, let's use that. Uh, a lender paid it would cost then the actual buy down cost is 14,500 roughly okay. so let's say that the seller only gives 9,000 okay. in in concession then you know we would have to use the rest from the from the lender rate would on that be about 7.125 okay compared to a six and a half if the seller can come up with everything right so it's going to be a little bit higher just because we need to go up in rate to get enough lender credit to cover the full the full buy down in monthly payment on that six and a half percent rate compared to a 7.125 is around 260 dollars roughly okay that's the difference in monthly payment that's the so premium definitely basically. it's yeah so it you know quite the difference yeah you know but but if you can't get it right if you you know it's either doing the lender paid or not do it at all Okay. Right, because yeah. if if the seller concession isn't there, we can't cover it unless we use some of the lenders. So, so you because then you you still get a uh, starting rate of, of five point one two five, gotcha. which is way better than anything else out there right now. So. Yeah, and then so um, with that on the higher rate, so basically the if you do have to have you come in with a little bit of money on the lender side of things then the buyer needs to qualify, I'm guessing, at that higher 7.1% interest rate in order for them to continue with the loan. Would that be correct? Correct. Yeah, okay. correct. We always go off of the, the, you know, the actual rate, not okay. the buy down. Because how it really works is that the, the credit, the seller credit or the lender credit or whatever, you know, however we set up the loan, is basically being put into a separate account with the lender, like an escrow account. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you know, whatever the buyer is paying every month, then the lender takes then a little piece of that escrow account to fulfill the full payment. Gotcha. You yeah. know, so it, it, they still are technically on the 7% 7, 7 rate or in this case, right? Mm -hmm. It's just that it, some of it is being paid from that escrow account each month. Okay. Yeah, and we've talked about this on the show before, but that's kind of one of the big reasons that this product might not be for everybody, especially those that have a large down payment, because you can basically take the same amount of money if the seller is unwilling to give it to you, or if they are giving it to you, maybe you can use that towards closing costs and something else, and then just take that money, put it in an account, and pay the extra couple hundred dollars a month and effectively right. do the same type of thing. So yeah, um, you kind of set up your own, mm -hmm. your own buy down in a way. Yeah. And then you can put it in an account that at least gets at least some type of maybe interest on there. So you're making a tiny bit of money while it's sitting in that account exactly. on there. Okay. And then, so that two one buy down program, it seems like that's probably the most popular program right now that most people are using to try to get these rates a little bit lower while they're waiting for rates to come down. Obviously you're getting approved at the higher amount. These are not variable interest rates. So I've kind of, I've talked about this before in the show as well, is it's not something that you don't know what your interest rate's going to be in two or three years. You know exactly how much your payments are every single year, and you're going to be qualified off the highest payment. So for those of you thinking this is 2008 all over again, where people all of a sudden had payments skyrocket, they couldn't afford their yeah. home anymore. This is not those type of programs. This is just helping you for the first two years to be able to get that lower rate in hopes that as history has shown, when a recession starts to happen, typically interest rates are going to come down by the end of the recession, which is what a lot of people are banking on right now. And it's happened 100% of all the recessions since 1980. However, it's not a guarantee. So you always want to make yeah. sure as a buyer, you're comfortable with that higher payment on there. Yeah, I think it, that's important to what you're saying right there. The, you, you're not going to you know, that's the buyer. Don't think about the lower payment. Of the, oh, they, you know, what a great payment. Of the, you know, that's the maximum I would, I would, I'm comfortable with paying. Yeah. You have to, yeah. you know, think about like, what well, worst case, right? Yeah. Three years from now, what's the payment I'm going to have then? Is that something that I'm going to be able to afford or not? Exactly. And then one thing that I, I haven't brought up a lot, but something that you want to bring up as well is that if you go to refund, let's say, let's say home prices do start to continue or continue to drop because they are dropping right now in a lot of areas, not significantly, but a little bit. 
and they continue to drop for the next six months. And all of a sudden, six months from now, you want to refinance. Well, if you purchased a home and your home is now worth a little bit less, even if it's not by much, trying to refinance is not going to be an easy thing to do because your home's going to be worth less than the loan. So you have to understand too, that if, if home prices continue to fall, these products do work, but you have to be careful because it's not an automatic that you're going to be able to refinance if you don't have the equity in your home to be able to do so without bringing in another lump of cash to be able to do. Is that pretty much in line with what you're telling people? Yeah, correct. Especially the people that are putting in, you know, a, a lower down payment, oh, yeah. let's say it's 3% or 5%, right? Then yeah. it's a little bit riskier if, if rate, uh, you know, home prices continue to drop. Yeah. Um, the ones coming in with 1% or, or, or more, right? They, they are a little bit safer because uh, even if home prices drop, so they don't have the 20% equity anymore, they might still have 15 or 10% equity, yeah. right? So we can still refinance them. The only thing that would happen is that they would have a little bit of mortgage insurance, yeah. you know, which might still be a better option, drop the rate and have mortgage insurance compared to keeping the, the higher rate. So there's always options we can look at. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So that's just something, especially those using a, a lower down payment, just to keep in your mind while you're going through these programs on there. Now, the other thing that I did want to bring up is that we, you also have programs out there that are three, two, one. So these ones yep. are not going to make sense for everybody because they tend to be more expensive, like we talked about off camera. But can you yep. kind of go over a little bit about the three, two, one programs and maybe when it might make sense for someone to look at one of these programs versus the two, one buy downs? Yeah, absolutely. Like you're saying, it, it's, uh, a lot more expensive. It's basically twice the twice the amount mm -hmm. to buy it down. Then three percent first year, and then two year two percent one and one percent at the third year. Only time it really would make sense if you get the seller credit, or if okay. you you know I wouldn't really use uh, the you know the lender credit on these because okay. the rate gets you know Crazy. it gets up there. <laughs> yeah. So I I wouldn't you know the it's gonna be a pretty expensive uh, expensive loan. So unless you can get a seller concession or potentially you know a realtor pitching in or something then i wouldn't go for this one the two one is uh, is enough in my opinion uh, okay the three two one gets pretty expensive for if you go the lender paid option okay so this might be good for someone that again might be bring doesn't have a lot of cash on hand uh, might be bringing in a lower down payment but they can find a great deal, get a seller to maybe be able to cover instead of 14,000. I think you were saying it's, it could be close to like 28, $29,000 yeah. or something like that. So if the seller is in a position where they need to sell and they need to give credits and they just want to get rid of the property, this could be an option for those buyers that are putting a low down payment in to be able to get a really low interest rate for the first three years, basically. And then that gives you a little bit more run rate of refinance later on because you have a lower rate for three years instead of two years. So I would say that's, I mean, in my mind, those are probably the most desirable type of buyers to look at these programs are the ones that have those low down payments that are yeah. finding those properties out there, especially as we're going to the holiday season where you're having a lot of sellers at this point, trying to debate, should I keep my property on the market? The holidays, I mean, it's Thanksgiving at this point when we're recording this next week. So do I want to keep my house on the market when I have family and friends over and we have open houses and people walking through my house? A lot of people are at that point where they're saying, should I sell? If I do, maybe I'll take a little bit of a discount at this point just to get it off so I can get it sold before the holidays. So there's, there are those type of deals out there right now, especially with sellers being a little bit scared on what's going on. You could find the right opportunity that would be able to make this make sense for you. Correct. Yeah, we definitely see that out there. It's a it's a buyer's market right now. We have you, you know a lot of a lot of uh, price reductions, a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of seller credits, but we've also seen then just you know, that's why the lender is coming out with this, that, you know, sometimes the seller credit isn't covering the whole thing. So that's why they do this change. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, so that's, that basically seems kind of to wrap this up is that this is just one more option and one more way out there where if you do find the right home and you aren't able to get the full seller credit, there are still available options now, which you didn't have a few months ago, where you can kind of structure it, where you can have the lender come in with some extra money or a realtor come in with some extra money to be able to get you into this house, get that lower rate for the first two or three years, depending on the program, and be able to get you into a home in the hopes that you can refinance later. And again, you just want to make sure that you're comfortable with the higher payment. So I think that pretty much wraps up everything I wanted to talk about. Like I said, I just want to bring you on because it was a kind of 
it was something I haven't heard of yet in terms of lenders being able to credit this. So I want to make sure that everybody that's thinking about buying a home in the next couple of months at least knows these type of programs are out there. So Dennis, what is the best way for people to contact you if they want to get some more information about these programs or just want to have maybe have a general conversation about the whole pre-approval process and just get that started? How How is the best way to reach out to you? Yeah, email or, or text or call works. Uh, maybe you can drop it in the Yep. in the notes section or, or uh, pop it up on the screen. So that, uh, D Engstrom at emortgagecapital.com or okay. uh, my phone number 949-945-4964. Either perfect. of those yeah. works. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and I'll put that in the comment section or a bio or depending on where this is posted on there. Um, so you can find his information, reach out to him if you have any other questions about the whole process. He'd be happy to help you out. So Dennis, thank you again for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And until next time, everybody, stay healthy, stay happy, and I will see you on the next show. Bye.